Okay. Yeah. Let's um, let's pray and then we'll get started, right? Okay. Why don't we just talk to the Lord this morning and just come before Him and uh, acknowledge His presence, right? And that's one of the things of worship that we acknowledge, recognize the presence of God. So let's let's start by just acknowledging and saying, God, You are here in our midst. Um, just want to welcome you. I just want to acknowledge the fact that you are here, you are among us, you are welcome, we honor you, we respect, we honor, thank you Lord, just go ahead and just acknowledge the presence of God. Okay. Let's just pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you even as we acknowledge your presence. You are worthy, Lord. Uh, we thank you for, uh, for the privilege that you've given each one of us to, to engage with you, Lord, to talk to you, to hear your voice. We thank you, Father God. And Lord, this morning, we, we just pray that you'll continue to speak to us. Lord, enable us to hear you. And uh, I, we pray that, um, Lord, our that truly that we will come alive in your presence, God. That we will come alive in your presence, Father God. That God, things in our lives, areas in our lives that are hidden, that are that are dead, Lord, that, that need a fresh lease of life. Father God, I pray as we encounter your presence, that all these things, all these areas would just, Lord, come alive. We invite you to touch and transform. We invite you to come and uh, breathe life, Master. We invite you to stir up, God, uh, things deep within us, in our hearts, Master. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, have your way. Come, Holy Spirit. Just welcome him. And say, yes, Lord, touch, transform, stir up, breathe life. And sometimes, you know, when it comes to just giving life, certain things have to come to an end. And let's just say, Lord, just invite him to do that as well. Yes, Lord, even as, to, as you establish your kingdom, even as you establish your rule and reign, oh God, the things that hinder, the things that need to be stopped, the things that need to be even weeded out, Lord, we pray that you would do that. You would do so, Father God. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Yes, Lord, we come at this day. We come at this time into your mighty hands, God. We thank you in Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, we are continuing with um, uh, the Hebrew expressions of praise, right? And um, we're looking at um, we're looking at this word called Barak, right? That's where we stopped last class. So Barak, which uh, which is a again an interesting expression of praise. What does it mean? Okay, it means to kneel down or bow down to bless God as an act of praise. Okay, kneel down. And bow down. So it's a it's a posture again of acknowledging the awesomeness of God, right? How many of us have knelt down and prayed? I think most of us have. How many of us have knelt down in punishment in class? <laughs> I've also done that, right? I think for one whole week they asked me to, you know, every class I was in that particular subject I was supposed to come and kneel down in front. Right? It was terrible, you know, kneeling down is an act of, uh, I know we sometimes consider this as an act of punishment, undergoing punishment, right? Uh, they'll say, the teacher will say, okay, kneel down. Okay, nowadays, I don't think they do that, right? Uh, no corporal punishment in the classroom. So they're very careful these days, no hitting children and all that. But those days, yes, it was done, right? But kneeling down is actually putting ourselves down. Right? We are bringing ourselves down, we are humbling ourselves, and we are acknowledging, you know, not everybody kneels down, right? It's, a, it's an act of extreme surrender or extreme, like if you want to use the word extreme humility, you know, you're just humbling yourself before someone, right? So you're, we are kneeling down. 
and the lord like we saw saw last class is worthy he's all powerful he's all knowing he's awesome and therefore this expression of praise where we kneel down before him and acknowledge that he is all that he said he is and if you look at some of the verses that uh, talk about this right and uh, one uh, one verse that we can go to is psalm 103 like psalm 103 verses 1 and 2 and and also the last few verses okay let's let's read that right it's very interesting to see um psalm 103 i think we we know this verse right we've quoted this verse um bless the lord o my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name and that word bless or praise um yes, psalm 103 bless the lord o my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord o my soul and forget not all his benefits if you look at the last few verses bless the lord you his angels who excel in strength who do his word heeding the voice of his word bless the lord all you his hosts you ministers of his who do his pleasure bless the lord all his works in all places of his dominion bless the lord o my soul right we've read this many times Right, we maybe we've also sung it, you know, ten thousand reasons. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and we've you know we've done that. But this is the picture that we have, right? When we say "Bless the Lord, O my soul," and when the psalmist says "Bless the Lord, O my soul," he uses that word "barak," which means to bow down or to kneel down, right? So that is that expression of blessing the Lord. That is the posture from which he's blessing the Lord. And now, so when we read that verse. It takes on a different meaning altogether, right? When we sing it, it means it takes on a different expression altogether, where we're saying, Oh, I humble myself, I kneel down, I bow down before you, and I praise you. Now, I give thanks to you, I bless your name, I do all that, but it's inside, this is how I, I want to express express my praise right now all these words that we saw you know all the five words that we saw before these are expressions right different expressions of praise to god right different ways in which we are expressing praise to god right expressing meaning you know conveying communicating praise to god hey this table is empty here three of you are there one of you can come here right uh, you don't have to be Oh, oh, here, right here in front. Here, uh, brother, here. Here also. Anyway, yeah, come. Okay, so um, so it is actually an act of humbling ourselves. So let's, look at, let's look at a few uh, verses, right? A few more verses. Um, Ephesians 3, verse 14. And Ezekiel also talks about that, right? Ephesians 3, verse 14. Okay. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's read the verses before that. Ephesians chapter three, verse eight onwards. To me, who am less, okay, uh, from than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see. What is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages had been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ? Okay, he's the creator of all things through Jesus Christ to the intent to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. So this is the reason. Okay? This is the context. And so he says, you know, all things that were created, were created through the Lord Jesus. He is the ultimate creator, right? He spoke things, he fashioned it, and he created. And then he talks about how through the ages, this mystery of the gospel was hidden, but it was now, it is now revealed, 
right? To us, it is now revealed to us as believers, so that the glory of God, the wisdom of God, might be made known, might be put on display to everyone around, right? To human beings, to the nations of the old, and especially, he says, even to powers and principalities, to the powers of darkness, that the wisdom of God may be made known, right? May be put on display through the believers. And then he goes on to say, for this reason, I bow my knees, right? For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, it's an extreme, it's an awesome privilege. It's an awesome privilege that this God, this creator God, may, will make known his wisdom to me. And not only to me, not only to us as believers, but through us to make known his wisdom, to make known who he is to everyone through us. Right? And then he says, for this, I bow my knees to the Father. I bow my knees to the Lord. Right? Let's look at one more verse. Uh, let's look at um, Ezekiel 3 and verse 23. Okay? Ezekiel 3 verse 23. Okay, um, somebody got it already. You can probably read it out. So I arose and went. Yeah. So I arose and went out into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there. Like the glory which I saw by the river Shaper. Okay. And I fell on my face. Yeah. So it talks about um, Ezekiel encountering God. Okay. So he's saying that, um, you know, this is how I went. I went to the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord was there. And um, like the glory I saw by the river. And then he says, I fell on my face. So he's talking about his response to the glory of God, or his body's reaction to the glory of God, right? There are some times when, you know, people say, okay, you know, why don't we all kneel down? And then people, uh, you know, we do it, you know, grudgingly, you say, oh, why is this worship leader saying, let's kneel down? You know, I don't feel like kneeling down, etc. But here, he cannot help but fall on his face. Why? Because he's seen the glory of God. You know, there are times uh, when we experience the glory of God, experience the presence of God, and there are times when, we just, when, when, when in those moments that you cannot but help kneel down, right? Because you, you, know, you realize that we are in the presence of someone who is so majestic, who is so glorious. Right? He, yes, he is our friend. Yes, he is Emmanuel, God with us. But when we, when we actually experience his glory, when we experience the majesty of his, presence that we cannot help but kneel down and, and Ezekiel has such an encounter he's saying that I saw the glory of God and I fell on my face and many times the Old Testament saints right you, you read about Daniel and also you know uh, you read about Jeremiah and they this they had to but fall down nobody told them nobody you know forced them but it was their response Right, the body's response. Sometimes we read that the body loses all strength. Right? He fell down as though he was dead. You know, we read in Revelation about the Apostle John, right? The body, physical body, loses all strength in the presence of this supernatural, infinite, awesome God. And therefore, you know, he says it just fell down as dead. Right? Daniel also. Just fell down as dead. So, this response, this human body's response, this shell response to um, uh, to to this awesome God is barak. Kneel down, bow down, even fall down. Right? Okay. Um, I see a raised hand, Pooja. Um, you have a question? You can just put it on the chat, please. If you have a question. Right. Okay. So we have this this whole posture. So, um, is it to be done in private only? Is it is it you know is it to be 
this barak is it in in private or is it congregational well if you look at psalm 72 and verse 11 all yeah all kings shall fall down before him all nations shall serve him and verse 15 and says and he shall live and to him uh, shall be given all gold of sheba prayer also shall be made for him continually and daily shall he be praised okay so obviously it's not about a just a personal private thing you know sometimes people say you know i praise the lord you know i worship god but it's a very very personal thing it's a very personal thing in the sense you know uh, outside I, I may not be very extroverted or i may not be you know very expressive but it's a very personal thing right for me this is how i do it this is how i am right well being personal because he's a personal god being personal in our expression of praise is fine but it is not a private thing right what is the difference between personal and private yeah simply put private is yeah no one is watching you're by yourself right personal is that yes it is something between you and god it is a personal collect between god but it's not private it's not when nobody is watching it's not when you're just all alone right so our faith is a personal faith right our testimony our faith our wit it's a it's a personal faith but it's not something that is private right so which means that we are expected to communicate we are expected to share what is in our heart our faith our relationship with the lord and that is why we have this whole thing of witnessing right where the lord commissions us to witness and we see in first peter 2 and verse 9 i think it it talks about how we are called out of darkness into his light right we are his royal priesthood we are his special people right and we are called out so that we may proclaim we may proclaim his virtues which means his characteristics right so that is what we see so we are called out and um, we are called out once so that we may proclaim okay so i think there is a question about praise and worship and glory yeah shani go ahead please um yeah i just well i was going over the notes for the class and i just want to make sure i'm clear yeah. about uh i'm trying to figure out the difference between the praise and worship it seems like praise can be verbal nonverbal. worship is is not and worship is more private you can't tell but praise you can am i correct about that yeah and then the other question that i have in terms of glory because i mm -hmm. looked it up in terms of um in the dictionary of bible which is saying praise but i know when you were using example in ezekiel you said he saw his glory so it seemed like it's it's different context is it different is the definition of glory different depends on the context of which it depends on the context that's what i was confused about Okay, so we see different uh, words describe the glory of God. We see words like in the New Testament, we see words like um, doxa, right? And in the Old Testament, we see words like kabod, uh, the the glory of God, the weighty glory of God. So, um, so simply put, when we when we consider all these definitions and descriptions of glory of God, we see that it is who God is and what He does, right? Who God is and what He does, which means that. It is a representation of who God is, His glory, and what He does, which means His power, His characteristics, uh, everything which is on display, right? So uh, when, when the Bible talks about the glory of God, it talks about who He is, personal, characteristic, power, presence, everything put together, right? So, uh, so that is what it is. So when He saw the glory of God, which means that who God is and and who he, uh, you know, uh, uh, who, who, what he does was actually put on display. It was visible, right? So it says he saw. And, uh, and also the glory of God is something which is, which you experience because it talks about the weighty glory of God, right? Uh, for example, when we read about the temple that Solomon um, inaugurated, right? Uh, built and inaugurated. And then um, the priests, they started to sing. And there was this glory of God in that temple, and they could not continue in singing, and they could not continue in worship, right? Which, is, which means that they experienced who God was and 
who God is and what he can do. They experience the, the glory of God physically, tangibly in that place. And they could not continue what they were doing. They had to literally stop and say, oh, this is too much. Right. So that is what it is. So uh, I hope that answered your question. Uh, you can maybe think of this phrase, who God is and what he does. Right? When you, whenever you think of glory. OK, thank you. OK. OK. So Barak, right? several scriptures. And there are some questions for, for also reflecting, you know, personally reflecting and thinking about this and to you know, um, uh, meditate on this. Right? Um, so we see that it is, you know, first question, if you look at it, you know, was it common? Yes. It was common. It was common in biblical times. It is common in uh, today, uh, today contemporary times as well. To it, and this expression is very valid. You know, it really does something. And all these expressions, when we think of, when we actually do it out of our hearts, and uh, not just because someone told us, or not just because you know it, it seems like the right thing to do at that moment. No, you know, when we do it out of our hearts and we mean it. There's something that happens inside of us. There's something that is released inside of us as well. Because we are posturing ourselves to experience from God. To, we are posturing ourselves to give to God his praise and his glory. Right? So we, we actually position ourselves to even receive from him at that moment. Right? Just like how we saw that surrender, act of surrender, you know, lifting up of hands. And we looked at you know um, Yoda and... Sorry, uh, uh, Toda and other things. Every expression that we see that we are actually positioning ourselves right, to experience more of God. And God releases something in us even at those times. So we see this is an act of humility, act of humbling down. It, is very, it was very common in biblical times. right? So, um, so I'm sure you can think of some moments when you knelt down. And maybe it was in... In the most unlikely of places, right? Kneeling down, and um, it was maybe not in church. Maybe it was, it was in a public place. Maybe it was a, it was in a place where people normally don't kneel down. But then you knelt down out of desperation, right? I've knelt down out of desperation for God. It was not in church. It was not in a comfortable place, but it was in the most unlikely of places where I just knelt down and cried out to God, right? Because I realized there's only God can help. I realized that only He can, you know, intervene in my situation in my life. So just knelt down and cried out to God, right? Acknowledged who God was, right? So maybe you can think of those moments. So what does kneeling before God? Communicate. What does it express? Very many things. We are hum we are humbling ourselves. We are saying that He is above and we are beneath. Right? We are we are saying that He is sovereign. That He is supreme. That He is all knowing. You know. In other words, we are saying that He is God. Right? And we are kneeling down. We are acknowledging that. We are we are saying, "You are God, and I am not." Right? You rule over situations and and circumstances, and yeah, I am not. I'm not, you know, I, I don't rule and reign over circumstances. You do. Right. Okay. So maybe it's a good practice to include that in our expression of praise to God, Barak. Right. Okay. Um, then we move on to the next one, which is Zamar. Okay. So this is, um, you know, again, one of the phrases, one of the words that we use. Um, and then this word talks about music. Okay, so finally we come to a word which actually talks about music, right? So making music, accompanying a song with music, singing songs accompanied by music instruments. So finally we come to this zamar, okay? Where Psalm 144 and verse 9, I will sing a new song to you, O God, on a harp of ten strings, I will sing praises. And that word used there is zamar. Okay, so right through the Psalms, we see several references, uh, and um, you know it's about forty-five times in the Bible, and and the Psalms many places where 
there is this use of musical instruments okay in praise to god in worship to god and different cultures we see different ethnicities have different music instruments right some are what we can call as contemporary music instruments like the ones we have you know in today's times like a keyboard or a guitar or a drums or, or whatever right and there are some you know different ethnicities different culture have cultures have different music instruments and it's all I'm sorry um pure baal sab udte cooler ki hawa mein okay um i think sonali your um, mic was unmuted i've muted it now okay just be mindful if your mics or cameras are um you know muted or closed um when you're in class okay fine so different music instruments you know i uh, i remember being in uh, i think it was in chatisgarh in champa and we had a you know we had a meeting for some local leaders and and others who wanted to be trained so this was a like a short term bible college there and uh, and i remember the only instrument that was used was uh, a davli right you know how what it is right it's like a tambourine with a you know you hit it and that was the only instrument right and that was the first time i'm experiencing you know i was thinking okay how how is everyone going to sing beautiful right there was only that for every worship time that was it that was the only instrument that was used but everybody was so intent intense even just you know so soaked into locked into worshiping god or praising god right i think i was the only guy with my eyes open i was looking around what is everyone doing <laughs> right but everybody was so um focused on worshiping god focused on god right so so different instruments you know um, probably we can talk about you know what is the most very different kind of instrument that you have probably used in worship or you have seen uh, for me it was this any one of you can say what is a very different instrument from what we used today in our times ha huh? dholak huh? what did you say mouth organ like a harmonica okay that i've seen people you know play and um okay there's a horn okay it's like a wind instrument like a trumpet kind of thing okay what else what is it that you have a personal experience oh you got to know what keyboard and guitar only when you came to bangalore otherwise uh, okay what is this uh ah. harmonium tambourine harmonium dholak tam tambourine okay that was how what it was okay yeah tambourine organ of course um church organ pipe organ um how many of you have seen a pipe organ okay so where where do you see it now andrews church okay is it a very portable thing can you move it around <laughs> okay a pipe organ actually they build it when the church is built it's actually built into the building that's how it is right it uses a complex system of bellows and and pedals and so on and it's very rich and uh, when you play it it's it's very majestic in its expression right so all these music different music instruments have its has its own expression it conveys something right and um because a lot of indian instruments like uh, you know have you heard of an indian instrument called uh, i think it's called gattam right it's like a pot it's like an earthen pot and uh, i think it, they use it in the south south of india and uh, they wear some you know some kind of a uh, yeah some kind of rings and they play on it okay it's like a, it's got a very sharp uh, it's it's sharper than a tabla tabla is actually a very kind of a low thing right even on the high uh, when you play but then this has a very sharp thing you know gattam and then there is also i forget the name of this instrument but they do it with their mouth and tongue i don't know what you call that right harmonica no, 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 no. not not this one i'm sorry what harmonica is that what it is 
no no it's a, it's actually a percussive instrument not a wind instrument yeah it's exactly one note that's right um you know you can just find that out um okay a bell that's right um a bell xylophone so we have all these varied instruments and all of them are perfectly valid to accompany a song right one is the accompaniment of a song to sing and you're accompanied accompanying the song with a music instrument so what does a music instrument do when you accompany a song with it what does it do huh M melodious okay now singing by itself right it has its own uh it has its own place you know if it's just voices and you're singing it has its it has its beauty and it conveys something right so uh it conveys probably you know all the focus is on the words and everything and and it comes conveys something very powerfully but when you add music to it what happens okay let's let's try out something i'll just bring that guitar okay so uh, it's not connected so online students may not uh, uh may not kind of hear it fully you can hear from the mic okay okay somebody says pan pipe oh yeah pan pipe okay uh, it's okay so okay. it's fine it's fine it's fine it's okay okay so um okay bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name spoke it right now let's try singing it okay bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name we just sang it and that's beautiful as well right what is the difference between when we spoke it and when we sang it anyone okay, let's try speaking it okay 1 2 3 bless the lord oh my soul Oh my soul worship his holy name and that itself is beautiful yes or no yeah right so when we sing it let's try singing it 1 2 3 bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name so what happened okay uh yeah go ahead calm down okay calm calms you down okay because of the melody who, who, what else emotions involved okay joy okay okay so emotions your emotions become even more involved when you actually sing it there's something else happens also you know when you actually sing it you tend to remember more you tend to remember it right um have you you know sometimes when you think of a song and you've forgotten the words how do you remember the song you actually sing it you sing it and then you remember it so when you actually sing it you tend to remember it more i remember you know teaching my daughter hindi now both of us don't know hindi <laughs> but uh, from whatever i could remember i was teaching her and then suddenly i had this idea okay we were learning a hindi poem and i said okay let's let's try singing it truth you know so i would sing it and then she didn't know the meaning of the words i didn't know the meaning of the words but then we said okay let's sing it and then let's try you know uh learning it and then she would she would sing and she would suddenly okay remember right so singing also helps us to recall remember right what else huh you you just talk about your personal experience right whatever um okay uh, even online yeah adds emphasis that's true it's more effectual happy because of emotions uh, the soul is involved very very good your soul is involved which means your thoughts your emotions your intellect um okay oh i see a lot of responses here it's more effectual okay wonderful 
yeah, and the emphasis and so on, yeah. Um, so one thing that we can say is it brings an emotion to the song, an expression to the song, right? Okay, so when we add music to it, what happens? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Let's sing it. One, two, three. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Okay, so what happened? And you add, added music. You get all locked in. Okay, when I say it's all locked in, focus, what else? You're able to engage even more. Without you knowing, your heart actually is drawn. Right? Without you knowing your... So that's why music is powerful. That's why we see that music is powerful. You know, why do they play music in a mall when you go? Why can't they just not play it? You know, you, you, you go into any mall. Is there music playing? Yeah. There's AC and all that, and then there's music. It suddenly you feel good. Right? It affects your emotions. And like you said, you know, it calms, it soothes us. It, it can also do the opposite. Right? Music can actually energize us. M music can actually uh, impact us in negative ways also. You know, you can actually become angry. You can become aggressive. You can be, you know, motivated to do something, you know, physically move, do something, all that. So music is powerful. So when you add words, when you add singing, and when you add music to it, it is powerful. It's a powerful, um, em emphatic expression of what? Of the truth of God. And you can use it for various ways, but the truth of God, you know, you're actually proclaiming, declaring, and, um, okay, yeah, Joanne says it captivates the mind, uh, they play music, yeah, so you can spend more, right, that's true, right, you feel your all your defenses are down, and then it just, uh, you know, one thing that happens when we add music, singing, it, it goes beyond our reasoning, our logical reasoning, right, our thinking, Many times it just cuts through, and so it is powerful, right? It it's, it cuts through all our barriers in our minds, our logical reasonings and cold hard logic and all that. It just cuts through and goes beyond that, right? So music is powerful in that way, and that's why we see, you know, the psalmist says, "I will sing a new song on a harp of ten strings. I will sing." praises to you. So he's saying, you know, he's using all this in order to uh, sing out to God, in order to uh, praise God. Okay. Um, Ephesians 5.19 also talks about making melody in our hearts to God. Okay. Now music itself, you know, we can say that it is, well, it is neutral, right? It is neutral in the sense you can, it's a tool, you can use it for good, you can use it for bad things. Right. You can use it to, uh, you know, to convey something good. You can use it to convey something bad. You can use it to stir up people to do good things. You can also use it to manipulate people to do something else. Right. So music is, we need to be careful. Music can be manipulative. Right. It can manipulate our emotions. Okay, so you tell me now, um, okay, what emotion is this? Okay, right. Let's, let's try. Okay. Um, Okay, let's try this. <laughs> what emotion is it? Joy. Mommy, I've passed. Okay. That's what we see, right, in serials and, <laughs> you know, I'm home. Okay, you know what? I failed. <laughs> Something like that, right? That's what we, you know, normally in the Indian scenario, like so. 
it actually expresses without even saying anything, right? For example, like uh, so, you know that something ominous. It's not ex exactly joy, right? It's not peace, right? Huh? Sorry? Madness, violin. What? A villain entering the frame. <laughs> yeah, so you see that I didn't have to say any words, right? I didn't have to describe the scenario, but music paints a picture in your mind, right? So we can actually use it to manipulate, right? So you don't have to, so music communicates something, right? Music is expressive, it communicates something. So therefore, when we, um, when we use music uh, along, with, along with words, when we are, use it to accompany a song, it communicates. So when you're, when you're, you know, when you're declaring something that is, um, let's say when you're decla proclaiming, declaring something like a warfare or victory and you know, you're saying, okay, God, you are awesome, you are great, you are victorious, you're the liberator. And when you combine it with music, it becomes a powerful expression. Now, words, melody, and song, and music. Okay. Again, all that is fine, but it ultimately it comes down to the fundamental thing or the crux of the matter, which is our heart. What is really in our heart? Because you can play something and you can sing something, but if your heart is dis distant, you know, if your heart is not in it, if your heart is detached from it, then it really doesn't convey praise or doesn't convey worship. Right? It just becomes a, meaning, a meaningless song. It's a good song. You sing it, but it doesn't become zamar. Right? Because our heart need to be, needs to be engaged. All these expressions, you know, even if it's, if it's halal, you know, all these expressions, shabak, a shout of praise, if our heart is not engaged in it, if you are not engaged in it, if God is not the object or the end result or the focus of Zamar, if God is not the focus of Shabak, if God is not the focus of Halal, right? all these expressions, then it becomes a meaningless, physical, empty exercise. Yeah, there's some valid, you know, people might say, okay, uh, hey, that's a, that's a nice song, that's a great song, maybe they get ministered to, but then you personally have not exactly, have not raised him or expressed your worship to God, right? So that is something that we need to be mindful of. Hey, these are, these are valid expressions, but am I in it, right? Am I personally engaged in it? Very, very, very important to ask ourselves, okay? So, yeah. So, um, you know, just go through those questions that are there in the notes um, and, uh, you know, uh, Probably, you know, if you've never been, if you never thought of music this way, maybe it's a, it'll expand, you know, our thinking, right? Uh, to use music, right? And also, when it, when it comes to music, even just playing instrumentally, okay, just music. At times, you know, there are no words, there are no songs, and maybe it's just music. That also conveys, just like how we saw, it conveys something, right? So, Maybe as a musician, you're saying, hey, I don't, I cannot sing, right? Maybe you're a musician. When you are a musician and when your heart is in it, when your heart is engaged in worshiping God or praising God, then the expression of what you, an expression of that praise or worship comes through your instrument, comes through your music instrument. Okay. Now, all of us, have music instruments in the sense our voice is our instrument. You know, we can clap hands, that is an instrument, right? We can uh, physically express, that can be an instrument. But typically when we are talking about a musical instrument, okay, and if you are a musician, then the ex you can actually express praise, you can express worship through that musical music instrument. Okay, so you can do that. So be mindful of it. What is it? You know, it can be a simple chord that you're playing, but what is it that 
you want to express, right? Maybe if it's something joyous and so you know that you, this is what you're feeling in your heart, let it come through in your instrument, whether you're playing drums or whether you're playing keys or, you know, let it come through, let it come through, right? Maybe you're playing something tender and playing something, something to adore God and So let it come through in your expression, in how you play it, right? So what we call as uh, what we call as the dynamics of uh, of singing or dynamics of of um, of playing you know, of playing a music. So it doesn't mean that it's it's loud all the time. It doesn't mean that you're shabak all the time. You know, shouting all the time, right? So I mean, people can you know. Hurt. You can hurt people's ears, right? And it's not really, you're not really expressing. Right? So be mindful of what is it that I'm saying? What is it that I'm singing? And what is it that I'm lifting up before God? And accordingly, you know, the expression of what I'm singing or playing changes, right? So when you say something tender and something that is, you know, very deep within, well, you're not going to shout it out. You're not going to shout it out. You're going to be in a tender moment. You're going to maybe even whisper it, maybe even not say anything, right? But when it's something victorious and declarative and, you know, something about triumphing over the enemy, you're not going to keep quiet. Right? You're going to raise your voice, lift your voice and declare. Right? So we need to know and understand this in order to express our praise to God. We do that in our conversations, right, with people. So we need to do that uh, when in our conversation with God, in our expression with God, also. Right? Okay. Um, I think there was a time. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, John. At times when we don't know the song words and when the music dominates, I don't feel involved. Yes, that's true. Right. Okay. Um, so Shani, you have a question. We we'll, can we take a break and we'll come back and um, okay. take your question. Okay. Right.